Welcome back, everyone. Now we're going to go to Shannon Lanier, who's been in Cannes for the film festival. Shannon? Hey, Lola. You know the bling here at Cannes is a force to be reckoned with, especially on the red carpet. So I had a chance to check out some of the best jewels APM Monaco has to offer. Kika, you're the creative director of APM Monaco. So tell us a little bit more about the company and why you decided to have a pop-up booth here at Cannes. The company APM Monaco, it's a family business, so uh, it started 30 years back. We're in, we've been into the jewelry business for 30 years as manufacturer. And then two years ago, we decided to launch a retail brand. And the whole idea of the brand it was to uh, create new arrivals every month and to uh, do fashionable jewelry, but that looks like fine jewelry. And so, so that's, that's what we do. So we have new arrivals, we kind of follow trends. So we have a different collection every month. What are some of the trends you're seeing right now that are real hot? Well, uh, the rock chic trend, it's quite popular with spikes and black silver with zirconia and hand bracelets, ear cuffs, uh, phalanx rings are pretty popular. Um, yeah, so we create every month like new trends and new new designs. What stands out about some of the jewelry that you've brought th today? Well, it's the first year we we've decided to do can to position the brand and to have the the knowledge and to put the brand out there because it's quite new to uh, to people. So we start opening quite a lot of boutiques and it's going well. How many boutiques do you have currently? We have quite a few. We have uh, Paris, Bordeaux, we have one here in Cannes, which uh, we just re, uh, re do a refitting. Uh, we have, we're opening Courchevel this winter, and we have a few boutiques in China, in Korea, in Russia. So we're expanding uh, quite fast. What's the range in cost? It's it's the whole idea. It's to mix and match and have fun with the with the jewelry. Well, I would say the middle price range is between 100 and 300 dollars. Then we have bigger pieces like bigger cuffs or bigger statement pieces, which are more expensive. But we try to keep it quite affordable so that people really can use it as a fashion uh, accessories. Even though we, we, the quality, it's all micro setting, and our signature, it's the pavé. Well, everything looks fabulous for me. I think it's time for me to pick out something for my wife. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's go look. <laughs> the bling definitely adds shine to the red carpet, but even more dazzling are the celebrity photographs. And Arise film reporter Sarah Himrajani caught up with a paparazzo. Well, one thing that defines Cannes is the red carpet photos, and those get beamed across the world. And someone who's been behind the lens for several years now is freelance photographer Amar. Amar, you've been to Cannes for a decade now, and is each experience the same or quite different? It's in the same place, definitely, but it's different every year because uh, many things are different. The weather, the people, the stars who come, so every time it is different, yes. And people don't realize that the press have to get quite dressed up for the red carpet as well. You wear a tuxedo every night. Yes. Uh, on day I can wear jeans like, like now, but on night time and on the red carpet, you definitely have to wear a black tuxedo. If you're wearing a dark blue tuxedo, then it's, uh, you're, you're, you're not accepted. It's a very strict uh, protocol, but it's very nice also because it's the, the, the image of Cannes. You know? People expect to see the stars walking among uh, all the photographers wearing black tuxedo, all the security wearing black tuxedo, uh, the president of the festival is wearing black tuxedo, so it's, uh, it's part of the atmosphere of Cannes, definitely. Now, when it comes to celebrities, which ones do you find the most demand for? Is it the Hollywood stars, is it the French actors and actresses, because you're based here in, pa in Paris? Uh, of course, the French actors and actresses are important for France market and for the European market also. But when we talk uh, worldwide, internationally, people go for the Hollywood stars. You know, really, uh, people who sell most usually it's uh, Sharon Stone, Angelina Jolie, and Brad Pitt, uh, Nicole Kidman this year, uh, Salma Hayek yesterday. I mean, these names are the ones that sell most. Of course, tonight there will be Robert Pattinson. These names, and of course, it changed with the years, you know. So yes, the Hollywood probably uh, attract more, uh, sell more, and sometimes for bad reasons also, you know. Because in Cannes, uh, I mean, the red carpet in Cannes is a terrible moment of uh, you can fall down. 
you can fall down, you can be uh, you can be wearing something that's not that mm. amazing. Wardrobe uh, malfunction. Yes, exactly. Wardrobe malfunction. Uh, uh, shoes that are too large or too small. I mean, things, little details. But when you have 250 photographers, some of them are really looking for the details, and the details are. I mean, on some on some people, the details are all perfect and very glamorous but on some others sometimes no and, and that's terrible <laughs> do you keep those embarrassing photos to yourself or do you look to sell them uh, I have to say that it changed a lot when I began uh, working uh, in the field I remember we had like a kind of uh, gentleman way of uh, treating these photos and we'd say no we can't do this but with the time and also now with up uh, with the Twitter and Facebook and with uh, more uh, competition from anybody who has a camera, so then the magazines and newspapers are asking also for pictures that are very tough and that are not as nice as they used to be. So yes, now we do sell them, unfortunately. And you mentioned technology, so Twitter, Instagram, the phone camera. Has that changed the way you do business? Do you, is there more pressure for you to sell the pictures as soon as possible? Of course, yes. So we have uh, now. When you look at this place, of course, uh, the best photos are done on the red carpet, where you cannot access like this. So even people who have uh, very good phone cameras cannot go there. So we still have a little bit a field uh, that, that we have a kind of privilege, let's say. But, uh, but we do have the competition of many people in the street. I mean, if they are walking next to a hotel and they see a star, they would shoot the star with their... Uh, and it's straight away on Instagram or Twitter. So we have to be uh, careful. We have to be to follow this. I mean, I remember a few years ago, we used to do negative and we used to process them and send them and to, to take hours before the photos on the magazine. Now, a lot of my colleagues and sometimes myself are uh, already connected with the wife wireless you know so we do the photo and straight away straight it is away on, uh, almost on in the, the magazine internet. and then on the internet yes. this and, is, uh, and you've seen hundreds of celebrities in your time at Cannes and other film festivals has there been one that you enjoy shooting or you look forward to, to photographing there are a lot so <laughs> of course uh, because she was here yesterday I love Salma Hayek because she's very uh, she gives I mean she, she she gives to the photographers what what is expected she smiles she waves she uh, yesterday she posed with her daughter with her husband etc uh, etc et that's what we call playing the game she plays the game some people uh, look for the photographers to get famous to get known and then once they are they are very much uh, contemptuous or they say we have no time or they, I don't want to do this I don't want to do that it's so we're a bit angry sometimes with them but uh, there are a lot I, can, I cannot mention all of them <laughs> well, Amar thank you so much and, and there you have it an insight into the, the life of a red carpet photographer here at Cannes for the two weeks of the festival I'm joined now by actor, model, and philanthropist, Jimmy Jean-Louis. Jimmy, welcome, welcome. Thank you. I'm very excited to see your new film, 419. Now, I know our Nigerian friends may know what that means already, but tell us more about the film. Yes, indeed, Nigerians will know. Uh, well, it's a movie that speaks about the scams, mm. uh, about prostitution, you know, the, 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 the girls leaving Africa, going all the way to Europe, stopping in uh, in Spain and and in Morocco and uh, and we try to follow them and see what's up with them and with that you know we deal with drugs and all kind of BS so we shot that movie in Paris and in uh, and in Senegal Dakar uh, and you mentioned the Nigerian scams those are the emails you get when you say I'm stuck in some country I need some money send me some money to bail me out yeah <laughs> often that could be a scam we okay. don't know where it comes from it uh -huh. could come from anywhere but yeah oh. that that's one of those little emails that sometimes I'm sure most people uh, on earth have, have received and most of the time it's just it's just a basic scam but it's one have of you them. ever fallen for any of those scams no no way man no. I know better <laughs> you know better. <laughs> I okay. know better man I've been traveling the world man trust okay. me so that's not gonna get me so what was it that attracted you about this role and what type of preparation did you put into it uh, well first of all uh, I think it's a story that few people know about they might have heard about it but they don't know about it in depth and really the uh, the most uh, uh, important subject of that is the girls that go through that prostitution ring and it's absolutely horrible and I think it's you have to expose that you have to talk about that because most of them think that they're gonna be leaving uh, Africa to go and walk somewhere where they end up 
be doing prostitutions for someone stuck in a place where they don't speak the language, they don't have any family members, they're completely stuck. It's like it's almost like slavery, but you know, doing prostitution. And it's still going on today. It's this still is going your way on today. Of you go to Paris to now. It? You go to Paris now. You find a bunch of them. Wow. Spain, Germany, Italy. Doesn't matter where you go. Mm, well, maybe hopefully bringing awareness to it will help put it into some of that that's happening. That is the point. But it's mm. also very beautifully shot because we mm. we shot in Paris, we shot in Dakar, in Africa, mm. and we had some great actors in in the movie. So. Uh, mm. Uh, all together, I think it's something that uh, definitely the African continent will be very proud of. Okay. But as far as the message for the world, it's something necessary. Thank all right, you look very forward much. to seeing that film. Yes, I. All right, okay. appreciate it. Now it's time for your daily festival film review with On Screen's Mike Sargent. So, Mike, two of the newest films we had an opportunity to check out are Maps to the Stars and Foxcatcher. Yes. What did you think first of Foxcatcher? Well, I thought Foxcatcher was a really well-made film. And I think Bennett Miller, who did Moneyball and Capote, really uh, took some material that has the potential to be maybe melodramatic. Well, explain the storyline for well, us. Well, explain the storyline. For those who don't know, it's based on a true story. Mm -hmm. And it's about uh, John DuPont, who mm -hmm. at a certain point in his career, when he's in his 50s, okay, he decided to sponsor uh, a wrestling team. And he actually coached them. Now, he doesn't know anything really or very little about uh, coaching. Although he acted like he did. Yeah, he acted like he did, but he had a lot of money, and so he was able to get who he wanted. And at the time, he, he hired two gold medal winning Olympic uh, winners for wrestling, mm -hmm. uh, the Schultz brothers, mm -hmm. played by Mark Ruffalo and uh, Channing Tatum. And after, everything that follows from there on is pretty strange. It's strange, but Steve disturbing. Carell played DuPont and did an amazing job pulling off strange. Steve Carell is almost unrecognizable in the role. Right. And I have to say, I, I think this is one of those movies that come Oscar time, this is going to be one of those contenders. And it's interesting because comedians... When you say a contender, what makes it well, a what, contender? Well, what I think it makes a contender uh, is not only is it well-directed, mm -hmm. you know, because it's very lyrical, it's, it's got its own pace, it, mm -hmm. like you know you're in the hands of a masterful filmmaker as mm -hmm. you're watching it, but also Steve Carell, like Jim Carrey and a number of other, uh, Tom Hanks and a number of other comedic actors, mm -hmm. he does a dramatic turn and shows that he's really got the chops. And I was glad we had an opportunity to see all the actors take on different roles in this film so I agree with you the chame chameleon aspect I think definitely, will help him with the war and season. I thought Channing Tatum too did a very good uh, you know after having done you know 22 Jump Street and right. things like that <laughs> for him to do something so serious and dark mm -hmm. I thought that was a very good move for him okay. too. Well speaking of dark Maps to the Stars is getting a lot of buzz here at Cannes as well. Yes it what is. What did you think of this one? Uh, well I'm a David Cronenberg fan but he's kind of hit or miss for me okay. sometimes he's just a little too out there or a little too esoteric a little too weird this I really liked I really thought it was compelling. All the characters were interesting. Well, explain to us well, what the characters went through. What, what the characters went through. This is a story. We meet a young girl, um, uh, Mia Wachakowski, mm -hmm. and she's she's a, a child burn victim, so she's somewhat disfigured, and she comes to L.A. and she says she's there to visit family, but we never quite see her meet family. She gets picked up by uh, Robert Pattinson, who plays the chauffeur, and then we start meeting these other characters, and we don't know how they're connected, but we do find out that they are all connected. Uh, we we meet Julianne Moore, who's an actor who's on a decline. We meet John Cusack, who's a self-help guru, and he's got a son who's a famous uh, star in a really bad movie called The Bad Babysitter. <laughs> and so they're all interesting characters, but then we start peeling back layers and finding out more about who they are. And you really get a peek inside of the lives of some of these Hollywood stars yes. and what they may be going through and how they're tormented and chasing that fame that they're so desperately wanting in their lives. Well, so. not j only that, but we also find out that they're all carrying these deep, deep, dark secrets. Mm, that skeletons could undo in the closet. Skeletons in the closet, <laughs> incest, all yeah. kinds of things that they all have a lot of guilt and issues about. Mm. So I don't want to give it away, but I have to say by the third act, you know, you forgot for a while you're in a David Cronenberg film. That's a good thing. But then it gets weird. Yeah. And he's got to throw the word flesh in there well, a few times. Let me ask you this. Why is it that a lot of the films here at Cannes seem to have a dark or weird, weird turn to them? Well, I think that for the international audience, one thing that the human, you know, all good movies, good stories have something to do with the human condition and mm. drama. It's right, always okay. something everybody can relate to. Comedy may not travel, science fiction, and you know, military or patriotic things may not travel, but a good drama, you can always 
And I That'll play anywhere. Plus, in the U.S., we like to have an escapism from life. So we like the superhero movies. Uh, we like yes, the fantasy we do. features. Yes, we, we do. Can go. Yes, we do. So we'll have to see what happens comes award season. We'll have to keep uh, checking out films here at Cannes well, to see what else is well, come. Well, remember, anything that happens here at Cannes kind of sets the tone mm. for what is going to be good or what to watch for. Okay. That's the Cannes effect. Oh, the Cannes effect. The I can love effect. the Cannes effect. Okay. All right, well, let's go check out some more films, shall I'm, we? I'm with you. All right, let's do it. All right, Lola, now it's time for me to get back to all the fun and films. I think I'll go chill on a yacht or hit up a few parties, but don't worry, I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. See you then. Ah, uh, Shannon, I cannot believe you're having all this fun without me. It's so unfair. It's so unfair. Patrick, what are we going to do? We have to have our own good time. We have to have our own good mm -hmm. time. What do you yes. want to do? You want to sing, dance? I mean, you go to the movies? Go to the movies. I want to go to the movies. And a party. That's right. All right, let's do it. Because he's obviously doing some partying yes. there. Yes, we'll go to the movies, have some champagne, and we'll have our own good time this here, is Shannon saying, Lanier. Shannon. While, we keep, <laughs> while I keep your seat warm, just keeping it warm for you. <laughs> we'll be right back. You're watching Arise Entertainment 360. <laughs>